Hi, I'm Autumn Mitchell. I'm a project administrator at the Nonpoint Source Unit in Eagles Water Resources Division. Today, I'll be demonstrating the Nonpoint Source Watershed model that's available to check out through Eagles Lending Station. This is a landscape model that helps us understand how we as humans either protect or pollute our waterways. This landscape represents a watershed and everyone lives in a watershed. The word watershed could be broken into two root words, water and shed. A watershed serves both meanings. It can store water for a period of time or it can shed water into a nearby body of water. Here we have a large body of water, an agricultural area and farm, an industrial area or a factory, a natural or recreational area, a residential area, a municipality with a wastewater treatment center that treats sewage. There's also a golf course, a construction zone, various animals like cats, dogs, and farm animals throughout the landscape, and roads as well. So let's look at our watershed landscape and observe what happens when it rains. As the rain falls on the landscape and is traveling in a specific direction, there's a force happening here and that force is causing the water to flow downhill. Does anyone know what that force is? It's gravity. So where is gravity pulling that water? That water is collecting in our rivers, lakes, and streams. So let's think about that for a moment. What lives there? What do humans use this lake or river water for? Would you want that lake to be a healthy body of water? Even if it looks healthy, how do we know for sure? Eagle has scientists who test the health of our lakes and streams to monitor how healthy our water bodies are. But what might cause a stream to be unhealthy? Human actions on land can change the quality of the water as it travels to our lakes and streams. Think about the products that we use outdoors or actions that we take in each of these areas that could contribute to water pollution. Here is a car driving along the road. Cars might leave behind oil, gasoline, or other car fluids on the roadway. In a residential area, people might be using pesticides to keep insects down, lawn care fertilizers, septic systems that need regular maintenance to work properly, and pet waste. What do you do with your pet waste? Do you clean it up? Did you know that soil can pollute water too? Construction projects such as new subdivisions can also cause soil to erode and wash away. Farms might have fluids from machinery, animal waste, fertilizers, or chemicals that can impact water quality. Farmers also till and loosen the soil to promote crop growth, and this can cause additional soil erosion. The fact that humans use these products and take these actions on land isn't always bad. What makes it a problem is when pollution makes its way to the water. So how does that happen? Remember, where does the water flow when it rains? What did you notice as it rained on our landscape? I noticed soil running off into the roadway from our construction site and our natural area. Pesticides and fertilizers running off from the golf course and the neighborhoods. On the farm, manure washed into the stream and fertilizers, soil and pesticides washed into the lake. Oils, gases, and car fluids from vehicles also washed into the stream. Can you think of any other things that happened? As you're looking at the model and observing where the pollution sources are, pay attention to whether they're point sources or non-point sources. A point source flows directly from pipes or comes from specific points throughout the watershed. Point sources are easier to identify because they come from a singular location. Some point sources are regulated, so the pollution is controlled. A non-point source is a lot harder to define because it comes from many different sources. Non-point source pollution is caused when rain, snowmelt, or wind carry pollutants off the land and into lakes, streams, or wetlands. We can't always tell where a pollutant is coming from, which makes it hard to control and correct. Let's look at the point sources in our models. The first one is our factory. Often, factories use water in their manufacturing processes. EGLE requires them to follow strict guidelines through permits to prevent any pollution. The wastewater treatment plant also releases water that is permitted through EGLE. Heavy rains could still cause sewage to overflow into the streams. Our third point source is a little tricky, storm drains and catch basins. Some people consider them a point source and others consider them a non-point source. The pipes that stormwater travels through are part of the city's infrastructure, and those are regulated. And technically, that makes them a point source. However, pollutants making their way to these pipes come to them as runoff, which is a non-point source. Our storm drains might be connected to the stream directly through outfalls, or they could be connected to our sewer systems. Do you know what your community's drains are connected to? Now that we've talked about point sources, let's take a look at the non-point sources on our model. When it was raining, did you notice the soil erosion coming from the construction site? Did you notice that the farm had a lot of soil, pesticides, fertilizers, and even some manure running off into the stream? 
What about the residential area? Did you notice the fertilizers and pesticides washing from there and from the golf course? And what if your septic system malfunctions? I bet if you took a look around your community, you could identify some of these things too. But what can be done to help? That's where best management practices come into play. These are actions that humans can take to minimize the risk of pollution. At factories and wastewater treatment plants, businesses apply for permits at Eagle. These outline what actions they must take to minimize the risk of pollution. Eagle ensures that these facilities follow the conditions of their permit. Contractors must install silt fences or vegetation to reduce soil erosion. The same thing can be done along our roadways and our shorelines to capture runoff. We can also encourage our communities to preserve our forests. In our recreational areas, we can install strips of native vegetation to absorb runoff. Now, there are many practices that farms can do to prevent non-point source pollution. Farmers can install fencing to keep animals out of the stream. Manure should be contained in storage areas. Farmers can use less tilling or cover crops to prevent soil erosion. They can also apply less fertilizer and pesticides to their field. Farmers can also build a berm that can be used to protect runoff into our waterways. Activities like cleaning up after your pets, disposing of chemicals properly, using less water, not littering, and planting native plants could all help reduce runoff into the storm drains, ditches, and waterways. Another tip is to talk with your friends and family about these problems and problem solve them together. Now that we've identified a few of these best management practices, let's see how they might work on our model. Now you can see, as it rains, the runoff from the construction zone and recreational area is reduced. Over on our golf course, the native vegetation that we installed prevented pollution from entering our waterways. Remember how our recreational area had significant erosion the last time it rained? This time, it's not as bad because the vegetation buffer must be working. Let's check in on our farm. The vegetation strip is preventing some of those pesticides and fertilizers from washing into the stream. Notice how the animals are no longer able to wade in the stream, so that keeps their waste out of it. The farmer has also contained the manure properly. Finally, the oil on our roadway looks like it's being caught by the extra vegetation too. Did you notice that we installed a lot of native vegetation throughout the landscape to prevent pollutants from making their way to the stream? That's because native vegetation has deep roots that help filter pollutants before water makes its way to the stream. While we likely can't stop all the pollution from entering our waterways, when everyone does something, we can greatly reduce it. I hope you learned a lot today. To learn more about what Eagle does to protect our watersheds, visit our website. Thanks for watching.